So let's now proceed to speak with Conrad to take on the level 60 challenge entitled The Promise of a New Beginning. Conrad knows the purpose of your visit and would like to give you a proper welcome. Now I know you will not have come all this way unless you had something important to discuss and I'm eager to hear what it is you have to say. But let's not do this on our doorstep, eh? Come with me. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and follow the field. Yeah, this is gonna be the easiest 167,000 points we get because of the fact that all we have to do is just meet Conrad on the other side of Rolgar's Reach. And since there is an Aether right here, I should go ahead and attune to it. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. There are a few others. But they're spread pretty far out. And you also notice as well, um, Sprint now has a longer cooldown timer on it. So, it used to be like 30 seconds, but now it's 60 seconds. So yeah, that is, in a way, a bit inconvenient. But I'm sure we'll be just fine. Because, yeah, um, another thing as a result of the change to Sprint is that it no longer completely depletes your TP. Which is, from someone like me, a plus. So let's speak with a trio of leaders and not step onto their table. Well, we're all here. Allow me to welcome you once more to Rauga's Reach, our humble headquarters. My name is Conrad Kemp, and I have the dubious honor of overseeing operations here. It is a pleasure to meet you, Master Kemp. I am Alfino Leveilleur of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, as are my comrades. Before I speak of our purpose here, pray allow me to thank you for sheltering Ida, forgive me, Lise, and Papalimo at great risk to yourselves. <sighs> this is not the right time! No, no, there's no need for that. They risk their necks for us enough times. It was the least we could do. Yeah, sorry about that. It's some telemarketer number. But yeah, I'm good now. I I wanted to, um, I mean, about the mask and... Ah, oh, don't fret over that. You're not the first person to take up arms against the Empire under a false name. We'd do the same if we had any sense. My condolences for your lost child. Papalimo laid down his life to save us. To give us a chance to make a better future for ourselves. There will never be a better time to drive the Garleans from our lands. But we have to take the lead on this. We can't leave it to fanatics like Ilbert. We've got your back. More than a few of our people were taken in by his promises. Followed him all the way to the wall. Good men and women who never came back. When Monago told us what had happened, how the bastard had made sacrifices of them for his twisted ritual, by Rolger it filled me with an unholy fury. But what's done is done. Best we can do now is see that it wasn't all in vain. That is why we are here today, sir. To see that some good comes of this tragedy. On behalf of the Eorzean Alliance, we do hereby extend a formal offer of military assistance to the Alamegan resistance. Do you now? Well, go on then. I'm sure there's more to it than that. So, we take the time to explain ourselves and what we're going to do for them. So that's the way of it, eh? The Alliance, hoping to avoid a direct confrontation with the superior forces of the Empire, wishes to engage them by proxy with our vastly inferior ones. Well, My you comrades and I must it. confer on your proposal. A moment, if you please. Yeah. Of course, Master Kemp. Take all the time you require. If nothing else, you'll have us. Because I want to, Plyus. 
And so, another 167,000 experience points. But we're getting less skill for each new quest. So, the next quest will belong to Alphanode, so let's speak with him for the level 60 challenge entitled, A Haven for the Bold. Alphanode is pondering how best to make use of your leisure. So, it would seem we found ourselves with a surfeit of free time. Ah, oh, forgive me. You're free to look around Walgar's reach. In fact, I would encourage you to do so. It will give you a better grasp of our current circumstances. Thank you, Master Kemp. I believe we will do just that. Let us make the most of this opportunity and assess the Resistance's capabilities. Free to poke our noses wheresoever we will, eh? I like the sound of that. Well, I already know this place inside out. I can show you around if you like, Corinne. I would appreciate that. Great! Let's get started! So it'll be up to Lise to give us a tour of the town. Similarly, in the way that we were given a tour of Ishgard in Heaven's Ward. But obviously it wasn't through Lisa, it was through a representative of House Fort Tom. I'll bet you think the assistance is mostly made up of Alamegan Heimlanders and like me, but the truth is that we don't even count for half. We've got Hellsgard from all the way over by the spine in here, and plenty of the Seekers of the Sun like Nargo. There's even some beast men, well, beast women I suppose, like that one over there. She's an Ananta. They've been with us for a while now. Well, one of the smaller factions has. The rest won't have anything to do with us. We're no different from the Gallians to them. They keep to themselves spending all their time crafting. Ananta make the most amazing jewelry, by the way. They use magics to twist metals and crystal into shapes you wouldn't believe. It's a pity people hardly ever get to see their work, but they mostly don't even know they exist. That's enough about them. Anyway, shall we take a closer look at the statue of Volgar? And that'll be over this way. Now yeah, we want to go on to the bridge here that extends over the lake. And so yeah, we've already seen this statue. It's standing at the foot of these waterfalls. Yeah, not so easy to see with the mist around, is it? Pretty awe-inspiring, isn't it? The breaker of worlds who guided our ancestors to these lands all those centuries ago. Ida used to tell me the story on stormy nights. She wanted me to understand, to remember. At the end of the fifth astral era, when the waters rose higher and higher, People all across Eorzea besieged the heavens for a sign, and lo, a burning star appeared in the eastern sky and led the way to these mountains of Girabanya. They who were saved by his grace pledged to honor and revere him, to devote themselves to great works without and within. A storm of blood approaches fast, hells open, heavens weep, for no one soul doth lie beyond the measure of his reach. That last part was inscribed on this stone by a monk of the Fist of Algar. Ida explained it to me. A day will come bringing strife and sorrow that none may escape. Waste not these precious hours, but in quiet preparation make strong the body and mind. I don't know if that storm of blood is finally upon us, but if it is, I have to believe that everything we've been through, everything that has led us to this point will see us through to the end. Oh, sorry, that was all a bit melodramatic, wasn't it? Let's keep moving, shall we? Off to the infirmary. Yeah. 
So you're thinking probably the best way to get over there is by walking. Well, thanks to a new addition to Stormblood, we can now actually go swimming in deep water like this. And you can even hit sprints to really get your freestyle on. So yeah, that's a new addition that has been made. And in some places, um, it's mandatory for you to do swimming, especially for quest aspects. This is the infirmary, as you can probably tell. Here's where the resistance healers patch up the wounded and tend to the sick. No matter how carefully we've planned our operations, casualties were inevitable. It's sad to think about, but it's also important to remember the cost, as Conrad would say. We should go. I'll show you the Aetherite Plaza next. Well, again, your moves on, eh there, Skyla? Well, this one's actually pretty easy. And now that we have a two mint, I can just pop over there for 100 gil. Yeah, I'm taking the lazy way over. There she is. When you've seen one Aetherite, you've seen them all, right? Not quite. This one's an older design, dating back to decades when the Fist of Vargar was still here. It may look a little different, but it works just as well as any other. I'll show you where the Sutlers are next, but don't forget to attune to the Aetherite before we go. Well, since we've already done that, I'll go ahead and, first of all, change back to... Battle of Tyre. Make our way back over to where Lisa's currently standing. Which is right over here. Yeah, she was referring to the sutlers, the various merchants and menders who offer their services here. Alright, Lise, to complete the challenge. Arms, armor, potions, you name it, these folks have got it. The resistance would be in a bad way without brave merchants to keep it provisioned. If you're short on anything, or you need something repaired, these are the people to speak to. Oh, Alphanone and Alice are here. Why don't you see how they're getting on? I think we'll do just that. So, we get ourselves another 167,000 experience points, plus our choice of armor. Now, I'm actually going to be doing something important here for myself. I'm going to be getting myself the maiming gear. Now, this gear is actually lower item level than what I'm currently wearing on Corinne. So, this armor that I'm going to be getting will be going to my next Warrior of Light for when the next expansion comes in two years' time. So, yeah, I'm going to be collecting for my next Warrior of Light in two years' time to replace and succeed Corinne. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? So, next up with the quest is Alice. So, let's take on the level 60 challenge entitled A Bargain Struck. Alice is noddingly, nodding approvingly at the Sutlers. Come to take the measure of our friendly neighborhood merchants. I guess so. They're a bold lot that matches plain. If the Imperials found out they were peddling their wares to the Resistance, they would be lucky to escape with their lives. It is a gamble lie, and I admire their courage. But the motives could hardly be said to be altruistic. Ah, here you are. I've been looking all over for you. We finished discussing your proposal and we're ready to receive you all back at the tent. I've sent someone to fetch a Shola and Kral, so if you'd like to follow me. Okay. Yeah, now we are going to eagerly find out what their answer is. Oh, Conrad, since you speak for everyone here, please give us your answer. So, what is your decision? Thank you all for waiting. We have reached a consensus. And? I, Conrad Kemp, do hereby accept the Eorzean Alliance's proposal. You must understand, however, 
that our cooperation comes with certain caveats. Namely... Those caveats being... Yeah, exactly. I take no joy in this, just so you know. Were it within my power, I'd offer you more assistance. But the resistance is far more fragmented than you realize. The men and women in my care belong to but one of many factions. So you Simply can't speak put, for all of them. I can only speak for the people of Rolga's Reach. Makes sense. Now, I have every intention of appealing to the others, and I expect many will agree. But it will take time, and I cannot guarantee universal support. Understood. I shall see that the Alliance is under no misapprehensions as to your position. Much obliged. But that's not the whole of it. As you can imagine, the loss of those who cast their lot with the Griffin left us short on numbers. Some of our most trusted veterans died at the Wall, and we've had to fill their posts with the young and inexperienced. Frankly, everything's in a right bloody mess. Oh, we'd be more than happy to help you get back on your feet. If we're going to work together, we'll be doing ourselves a favor. Well, there's no shortage of work to be done, that's for sure. We're in dire need of new blood, too. Ishtola and I could lend a hand in the infirmary. From what I saw, they could do with a few more healers. Makes sense. Very well. I, for my part, shall return to the Rising Stones. I'm certain there are others among the Scions who would welcome the opportunity to fight for Alamegan liberation. And as for us ladies... Um, is there anything else we can do to help? I had something else in mind for you, Lot. Monago and Mefrid will tell you more. Alright. Understood. We won't let you down. And so, we speak with Alice to complete this challenge. Right then, Monago and Mephrida to be our keepers. Knowing not, of, knowing not of what they require, one task is as good as the other. Make your choice, Corinne. And so another 167,000 experience points to us, plus choice of various headwear. I will go with the casting headpiece. It'll be a while before I can use it, but I might as well pick some up anyway. And now our Aether Compass may be now used to locate Aether Currents in new regions. So now both Mephrid and Monago will each have main story quests for us. Now, in order to advance the main story, we have to take on both of their options. We can't choose one or the other. We have to complete both series of quests that they will have for us. So, let's go ahead and say ladies first and speak with Monago for the level 60 challenge entitled A Friend of a Friend in Need. Before she tells you of her mission, Monago has a few things she would like to say. Before we begin, I'd like to thank you and the sons again for patching me up after I bled all over your floor. I owe you my life and I won't forget that. Furthermore, it was rude of me to run off without saying a word. It's all well and good me claiming my duties here couldn't wait, but a potting thank you was the very least you deserved. My apologies. Yeah, and after thinking that you were just going to be a f someone who's going to lead us right into disaster, I guess on part you're forgiven there, Monago. And thank you. Now to business. Commander Kemps entrusted me with a formal reply to be hand-delivered to the Alliance leadership. It covers everything we discussed, as well as detailing the disposition of our forces. What I need is an escort, one or two men at most, so we can make it to this wall swiftly and without attracting undue attention. Very well, I shall join you in this. General Aldin commands the forces at castro Morion. It should be simple enough to see it in his hands. Great! That's just what I wanted to hear. When you're ready to depart, meet me at the pass leading out to the reach. Very well.
So we'll come back from Mephrid later when we're done with Monago's quests. So yeah, she's pretty much gonna wait for us there. Plus there's also a level 60 side quest we can do while we're in town. Because yeah, they're, they're now gonna start um, offering us side quests as well. And we will want to take advantage of those because those quests that are marked in blue and with a plus symbol, those are quests that will allow us to obtain additional Aether Currents so that we can get the opportunity for our Chugbo to fly. So, since we're in the neighborhood, we might as well speak with Olga Ironheart. Hmm, is that a sightseeing log? Unless I'm mistaken, do you perchance know of a woman named Milith? I do. Haha, <laughs> what are the odds? Milith is my niece, lest you wonder, and she has told me much and more about you in her letters. I will wear my manners. Olga Ironheart at your service. I am an explorer like most of my clan, and my niece may bade me share with you such knowledge as I've accumulated. Here, lend me your log. Let's see now. Definitely there, there, and there, and there. Yes, that ought to suffice. My explorations have taken me far and wide, but dearest to my heart are the regions of Volamigo, beautatious in their ruggedness, and the lands of the Far East, glorious in their diversity. There are many wondrous sights to be seen in these places, and I've written down the directions to them. Some will prove more difficult to reach than others, but even if you're half as resourceful as Smith says you are, I'm confident you will find them all. And with that, I shall leave you to resume your adventures. Go forth, my friend, and take in such breathtaking vistas as even my father, the great Roddard Ironheart, could not see in his lifetime. So we got an expansion to our sightseeing log for Stormblood. So you might have seen those before because um, I've seen, shown them up in streams. They're blue spinning glowing icons that you can access. You have to be standing right on them and use the lookout emote to officially capture them in your log. So let's go ahead and speak with Monago. Got everything you need? Good, then let us be off. And so off go Monago and Alice, eh? So as far as going out into the wild, we actually want to find Monago. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, because I know eventually we're going to be taking her to a certain point. Um, no preference. Yeah, we're going to be taking her to a certain point where we are going to be trying to um, meet, have her meet with um, General Alden. So that's going to be necessary for us to do as far as the story is concerned because that's who she wants to speak with. And I'm still picking up feral opponents. Yeah. All they need to do is just turn their gaze for one second and all of a sudden they're on you. Yeah, you approach them with their back turned and you think, oh, I'm going to be fine. And then all of a sudden, nope. Okay, Monago. Quiet. Hear that? There was a Cerulean engine backfiring. Imperials. Ye gods, you are pretty eternal senses. I didn't hear a thing. When you grow up haunting in these lands, you learn to discern the sounds that can mean life and death, be they of a predator or patrol. From what I'm hearing, we have a seven-man patrol augmented with a single Magitek armor. Wide search pattern divided into two, no, three teams. I don't think they know we're here. It's risky, but we shall split up and try to take more by surprise at the same time. We don't want them calling reinforcements. Three teams, three of us, nothing for it then. Where are they? Head north. You should see them long before they see you. I'll deal with the ones to the south. The armor should be just to the west. Corinne's best equipped to deal with that. We attack in five. That should be enough time to get into position. Won't we'll everyone the West Bank after? Any questions? No? Then good luck. 
And so we're gonna go where we've been instructed to. It's actually not all that far. Yeah, Scully needs help taking on this Gagna. Yeah, something else you also may have noticed, um, if you're someone who watches my videos and is familiar with me using Leg Sweep, which was originally a default Lancer skill, um, you'll see that the, the animation for Leg Sweep is to use your Lance to Leg Sweep your opponent to cause the stun ability to occur. And I'm gonna get this Bopper here for no other reason than the fact that I don't want him running interference. Alright, there we go. Yeah, get him taken out of the... Oh! Now nah, we're not gonna be afforded a luxury here if the Gagna comes to say hello to you. Yeah, with so many feral opponents, you really have to be on your toes. Yeah, over here. I meant to, I meant to pull you over, but it didn't work out like that. Okay. Shall we see if we can get these things to show up? Alright, I got my set, you got your set. But here, within Stormblood, we can actually help each other out. So we can... I can be able to hurt an opponent that's not in my quest in order to help out someone else. So this is really a great feature that they've added into Stormblood, is that you can, even if you're not in party, you can literally help out another person, even if the enemies that you're fighting are in someone else's quest. That is, that is a very impressive change that they've made to Stormblood, and it's definitely my favorite. Come on, get out there, Kieran. There we go. So as we make our way ever closer to Castromorial, we'll rendezvous with, again with Monago. Looks like the ladies were successful. It looks like everything went to plan. Not that I'm surprised. The three soldiers I faced didn't put up much of a fight. Most of the Imperials we get out here are conscripts from other provinces with little training and even less conviction. It's grim work killing men and women like that, but don't doubt that they'd do the same to you if the walls were reversed. And don't you dare pit him man in armor. Conscripts or no, a soldier piloting one of those can kill a dozen men in the, make, in the blink of an eye. Not that I need to tell you that after what happened at the wall. Indeed. So, another 167,000 experience. Plus, we'll go ahead and get a Dragoon's armor. All in future planning. So, up to Monago's next quest for level 60 entitled, Signed, Sealed, To Be Delivered. Monago would like nothing more than to continue on to Castor Morial. Right, I believe we rested long enough. We should resume our journey before someone notices they're missing patrol. Good idea. So now she should be pretty much on the threshold of Castor Morial. So back across the Veladana River. Yeah, no, no, that looks like one of those Sarcosticus enemies, but yeah, in actuality, it's just a finely chiseled stone. Probably chiseled by nature itself. So let's make our way up. We're going to ignore that treant and this level 70 rank A hunt. Yeah, if you run a certain distance, the enemy will give up chase on you. Okay, Monago. Well, you guys okay? We're clear. Only Alliance patrols ahead. You said the forces at Castro Morion were under the command of Fenname General Raban Aldin, did you not? By Rolga, the bull of all amigo himself. I never dreamed I'd have a chance to meet the legend. And so now, Raban is who we speak with in order to complete this quest. In fact, yeah, I'm going to... Actually, I can't cheap it yet because I haven't attuned to the Aetherite yet at Castamorial. I feel like such a nerd. Yeah, 
Yeah, there is there is an a, there is an Aetheritic Castromorial, and I neglected to attune to it. Well, we're gonna make it to where we need to be. So yeah, Jenna, we'll, we'll get to you in a moment. But first, I must deal with this blatantly glaring omission. There we go. Now let's speak with the Flame General. Accompanied by his adopted Lalafell son, Pippin. Hey, hello again, General. It is good to see you again, my friends. I hope you are here to tell me you have made contact with the Resistance. We have. We are, General. Allow me to introduce Monago of Rolga's Reach. At your service, sir. And may I say what an absolute honor it is to stand before the Bull of Alamigo. With wise, wide These open are not the blood sands, girl. You and I are but soldiers on a battlefield fighting for the same cause. Uh, as you say, General. <clears throat> on behalf of Commander Kemp of the Alamegan Resistance, I present to you our formal response. I'm sure you'll like what you see. Good. I'm glad we've reached an accord. Though I was not aware you had suffered such losses. Aye. Some of our finest took part in the Griffin's doomed assault, and we've been struggling to find new recruits ever since. The massacres cast a pall over the whole resistance, and many who might once have been open to joining us have since thought better of it. Can't blame them, can ya? After all of the Griffin's false promises, one can hardly blame them. They have no desire to give their lives for a lost cause. So what are we thinking about? We will not lie to them. This is war, and lives will be lost. Yet what we offer is not the fever dream of a madman, but true hope. The people need proof of this, Father. Let us show it to them. I say we stand shoulder to shoulder with our new allies and engage the Garleans in open warfare. The Resistance must demonstrate that they can hold their own against Imperial Regulars. And with our assistance, I am confident they can do just that. If we can achieve even a token victory, I believe it will serve to rekindle the hope of the Alamegan people and inspire them to rise up once more. Aye. Aye. Once word spread that we'd won a battle against the Garleans, I'd wager we'd have new recruits flocking to us from Malms around. The question is... When and where do we strike? Exactly. I'm glad you asked. I have a plan. Please tell us. <laughs> With a wide-eyed grin. But yeah, if we want to get it out of him, we'll have to go outside of cutscene. All scouts recently informed me of an interesting development at Castellum Volodina. Namely, the arrival of a shipment rumored to have come from the research and development facilities near the capital containing prototype Magitek armor. It is all assessment that this armor is to be field tested here, most likely against the Lion's forces. Mayhap before the day is out. Damn it all, more Magitek weapons? That's the last thing we need! Your concern is not unwanted, but we needn't despair just yet. The shipment is thought to have contained a single heavy unit and one or possibly two support units. With a well-laid ambush, we are confident we can destroy them all, thus hindering their development and delaying future deployments. And should we carry out this as a joint endeavor with the Resistance, they will have their rallying cry. It will mean dropping all pretense about the Alliance not wanting to go to war with the Empire, but you'd have a lot more folk willing to stand up and fight if they knew they weren't alone. And you were going to have to do it eventually anyway. 
Exactly. And so what I propose is simple. We hurry their patrols to bait them into bringing their prototype weapons to East End while our resistance allies will take them from behind. Simple indeed, and well within our capabilities. I see no reason to delay, especially if a field test is imminent. What say you? Assuming the Vice Marshal's intelligence is accurate, I agree with his assessment and fully support his plan. I shall notify my comrades at once. Understood. I shall have one of my men bring you the details of the plan and on. And so, away she goes. And we, for our part, will be fighting with the Alliance, yes? I somehow doubt you were intending to sit this one out. <laughs> and so, more experience to me. And I'll go with the casting chess piece. And so, now we have a lot of quests to um, take on here at Castor Morion, so yeah, we'll have no shortage of things to do here for the time being. <laughs>